Thank you to Opera for sponsoring this video. What makes an animal smart to us? Is it being a relatable mammal, like an elephant or dolphin or primate? Is it doing some set of behaviors that we think of as complex? Or is it just having a big old brain? The thing is, we've kind of been fixated on that last one. But lots of birds are capable of complex problem solving and even language to a degree that seems too advanced if we just look at brain size. After all, like a crow brain and a chimp brain are not the same size, yet some birds and great apes have been documented performing cognitive tasks at similar levels. So how do birds match wits with animals whose brains are tens of times bigger than theirs? And also, what does it even mean to be intelligent? The Bizarre Beasts Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. You can sign up by January 20th, and the first pin you get will be a gorgeous Goffin's Cockatoo. One famous example of clever birds is the research attempting to teach parrots human speech. Alex, the gray parrot, is maybe the most well-known case. He learned around 100 words to answer questions about shapes, numbers, materials, and actions, and even got pretty good at math, both verbally and symbolically. But as impressive as straight-up talking may seem, Team, some critics have chalked up these results to just a complex form of conditioning. They argue that test subjects like Alex weren't actually internalizing the meaning of words, but were instead simply memorizing the sounds and the contexts for using them. An argument could be made that that's just what language is, but luckily there are plenty of other examples of bird intelligence that we can focus on too. Like in a recent episode, we covered the lengths humans have to go to in order to outwit ravens causing trouble, and plenty of members of the Corvid family are capable of similar shenanigans. For example, New Caledonian crows can plan several steps ahead while using tools and ignoring distractions, and carrion crows, letting cars crack nuts for them in crosswalks, have been observed for decades. In another raven study, one group was given the choice of an immediate reward or a token to trade for a future better reward, while a second group was given the choice of an immediate reward or a tool to retrieve a better reward later. The ravens offered the token or the tool consistently consistently went for that delayed gratification option. I have a hard time with that. And corvids aren't the only birds to use tools. Woodpecker finches in the Galapagos use cactus spines to catch hard-to-reach bugs, and hyacinth macaws use pieces of wood to stabilize nuts as they crack them. Palm cockatoos use musical instruments to attract mates, and a disabled kia named Bruce has even been observed regularly and selectively using tiny pebbles to help him preen in place of the missing upper half of his beak. The brains of corvids and parrots in particular stand out from those of other birds in much the same way that the brains of great apes stand out from those of other primates. And some very cool experiments have come out about these groups. For instance, one research team demonstrated that Goffin's cockatoos can not only use tools, but can discern when to use different types of tools in combination, and when to bring one or more of those tools with them for future use. This use of tool sets is distinct from just using a tool and then trying another one based on what happens with the first, and the experiment was designed to look for this difference with the cockatoos. A box with a nut inside was set up in such a way that the cockatoos would have to use one tool to puncture a membrane, and then a second tool to reach the nut. Another easy-to-reach membrane on the other side of the box allowed the cockatoos to learn what it was and how to break it before the testing started. These test subjects easily learned how to use one tool for poking and one tool for reaching, so the next step was to see if they could determine when to use each or if they were simply trying stuff until it worked. Subsequent experiments showed that the cockatoos could tell, based on the box's setup, whether to use both tools or just one. And in a third experiment, the cockatoos had to decide whether to bring any of the tools with them when walking or flying to a box in a new location, and if so, whether to bring one or both tools. Despite the added difficulty of carrying both tools, the test subjects nonetheless did so when moving to boxes requiring both, and occasionally carried only one when moving to a box that required only one. This kind of tool set use has only been observed in the wild in chimpanzees and goffins cockatoos. So hopefully we're in agreement now that birds are pretty brainy, but their brains are pretty tiny. Some ape brains are bigger than some entire birds that we have just talked about. So does having a bigger brain not really make that big of a difference? Well, scientists have found a positive correlation between cognition and brain size within taxonomic groups. So there's more justification for this than just brain equals think, more brain equals more think. At least in primates, tool use, social learning, and the ability to come up with new behaviors when needed all 
all seem to increase with brain volume. That is, there are actual metrics for what we consider intelligent behavior that do correlate with brain size. But this correlation doesn't necessarily show up between distantly related groups of animals. Instead, intelligence may be more a matter of what types of brain structures an animal has and in what proportion to the other parts of its brain. For us mammals, the neocortex is considered the main cognitive brain bit, but birds don't have one of those. Instead, the front portion of their brain is made up from different structures that may perform a similar role. And birds and mammals both do have a brain stem, which is responsible for more unconscious functions that we might not associate with thinking, per se. So one crude way to assess capacity for intelligence in both birds and mammals would be to measure the ratio between these analogous front parts of their brains and their brain stems. And interestingly enough, this ratio for parrots and corvids differs from other birds in a very similar way to how it does for great apes compared to other primates. In other words, having a big forebrain seems to be the main trait distinguishing both great apes and most intelligent birds from their peers, even if the exact makeup of this forebrain differs greatly between birds and apes. Animal smarts are also associated with certain sections in the midbrain and the way that these connect to each other. And sure enough, birds also follow similar patterns here to analogous brain regions in primates. Cooler still, and absolutely bizarre, corvids and parrots have as many neurons as, and sometimes significantly more neurons than, primates with significantly larger brains. Meaning that part of the key to so much thinking in so small a space is the fact that these birds might simply be more efficiently packing their processing power. All of this suggests that the brain architecture necessary for complex cognitive function convergently evolved from different ancestral brain structures, all with the result of some real smarty pants in different parts of the animal kingdom. So, why have we always been so hung up on apes? Unfortunately, when comparing ourselves to other animals, we can be a bit insecure about intelligence, it seems. The centuries-old mentality that some special quality must separate us from other species still shows up, even in modern research, leading us to focus only on our closest non-human relatives. Many of the tests we use to even assess animal cognition are completely based on human experiences, like mirror self-recognition tests, or based on on ways of thinking that may just be exclusively a human thing. So what we call intelligence has often just meant the metric of how human some species can act. And it hasn't helped that decades worth of animal studies have also included the stated goal of measuring an animal's intelligence purely as some proportion of our own, resulting in claims like, dogs are as smart as a two-year-old child. Luckily, over the last few decades, scientists have been slowly shifting their focus from a human-based interpretation of what intelligence is to an evolution and adaptation-based interpretation instead. After all, knowing why animals use their brains in the cool ways that they do is a lot more useful than just trying to pick out which animals are most identical to us. Shifting our focus from how can these non-human animals be so smart to instead how can being smart provide an evolutionary advantage allows us to better understand intelligence as an adaptation instead of as some je ne sais quoi that only the most special creatures can have. Absolutely, there have been plenty of life forms whose evolutionary success has not exactly relied on a lot of quick thinking. I'm looking at you, slime molds. But that strategy has been super valuable for others. It's a big, wild world out there full of unexpected challenges for beasts like parrots and corvids to navigate. And when we start looking at thought as a tool for solving ecological problems, the many different brains of the world start to seem a bit less bizarre. Signing up for the pin club at BizarreBeastShow.com helps keep the channel going. If you want a brainy bird to be your first pin, sign up by January 20th. We got some amazing artists lined up for this year, so do not miss out. And now for some bonus facts. Earlier in the episode, I mentioned palm cockatoos in one study used musical instruments to attract mates, and that feels like it maybe needs a little more explanation. How do you play a musical instrument if you are a bird and don't have hands? I know they got pretty dexterous feet, uh, but I have yet to see one with a guitar. Well, it turns out palm cockatoos are more into the drums. Specifically, they made drumsticks from sticks and seed pods, and they tapped them rhythmically against trees during mating displays. They tended to use sticks more often than seed 
seed pods, and each male customized the size and shape of his drumsticks. He didn't just copy his neighbors. I also pointed out that bird brains can be small in absolute size while packing a lot of efficient processing power. But you can also look at relative brain size across birds, scaling brain size to body mass to compare different birds to each other. It might not come as a surprise after watching this episode, but parrots, corvids, and owls tend to have bigger brains relative to their bodies than many other birds. And a study published in 2023 suggested that the thing driving the evolution of relatively big brains in birds is parental provisioning, including variables like how big the egg is and how much time parents spend bringing food to their babies. And this makes a ton of sense, right? Big brains require a lot of energy, which means big-brained babies need a lot of resources, and many of these brainy birds are born pretty helpless, which means their parents have to invest a lot in them. And that actually reminds me a lot of us, or primates in general, who also tend to be born helpless and have bigger brains relative to body size than many other mammals. Thank you to Opera for sponsoring this video. Opera is faster, smoother, and smarter than the browsers you've used in the past. The Opera browser has new tab capabilities and dynamic themes for a truly modern browsing experience. Opera also has features that help us make this show. When we are finding images for Bizarre Beasts, we end up with a lot of open tabs to everything from research papers and stock footage websites to museum archives and travel blogs it can be a bit of a mess. Opera's tab islands make this much easier to manage and actually find what you're looking for. You can organize all your tabs and collapse them, and thanks to tab traces, I know which tabs I've visited most recently. The darker the underscore, the more recently I've visited it. And if in all those tabs you find an image but you aren't totally sure if it's the critter you think it is, Opera makes it really easy to pull up a split screen so you can have your mystery image on one side and your reference image on the other. They've got tons of other features like custom browser themes and a floating music player. Get the Opera browser and start organizing that tab chaos right now. Download Opera for free at the link in the description.